right, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I am Jennifer Moore, and I am the Director of Media and Community Relations, and it is my honor to be here to emcee the event for the swearing of Miss Stephanie Pugh. So with that being said, before we get started, I just wanted to, to recognize a few special guests with us today. We've got Suffolk Mayor Michael Duman, we've got Vice Mayor Lou Ward, Councilman Leroy Bennett, Councilman Roger Fawcett, Councilmember Leotis Williams. We have, uh, as well, the Honorable Judge Hellevi Holland. We also have Commonwealth Attorney Narendra Plez, Portsmouth City Attorney Lavanda Graham-Williams, the Honorable Judge Jamila LaCruz, the Honorable Judge Roxy Holder, and the Honorable Judge Erica Massey. As well, we have Fire Chief Michael Baraki, Police Chief Danny Bowie, and from the Treasurer's Office, we've got Deb Deputy Treasurer Andrew Owen, and we also have the Clerk of Court, Randy Carter. And of course, we have Al Moore, our city manager, as well as our two deputy city managers, Aziz Felder and Kevin Hughes. So a very impressive uh, list of dignitaries joining us today. And of course, any uh, current or former dignitary that I've missed, I thank you for joining us as well. So with that, we'll now have the presentations of colors by the Suffolk Police Department Honor Guard, followed by our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll now ask Mr. Elliot Moody to lead us in the invocation. Y'all can take your seats. Thank you. And good afternoon, everyone. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather, Lord, in the midst of so much turmoil in our world. Lord, we are thankful and grateful that we can gather to celebrate this occasion of the swearing in of attorney Stephanie Pugh. Lord, we ask that you would have your way in this service. Touch each and every person here, Lord. We invoke your Holy Spirit to come and dwell with us, to celebrate with us now, Lord. Have your way, just as you have had your way in her life up until this point. Lord, we're asking that you do not stop now. Have your way in this service. <clears throat> have your way as we continue to celebrate. Lord, we will be careful to give your name all the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Moody. For our welcome and remarks, I'll ask our Mayor Michael Duman to the podium. Mayor. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues and honored guests, it is indeed a pleasure to be here this afternoon to recognize the appointment of Ms. Stephanie Pugh in her new role as Deputy City Attorney. Stephanie has a distinguished legal background and a wealth of expertise across a diverse array of local domains. She has had experience arguing cases before the Court of Appeals of Virginia and the Supreme Court of Virginia. In addition, she served as an adjunct professor at the Tidewater Community College for 14 years, shaping minds of future legal professionals. Ms. Pugh has been a valuable member of our city attorney's office since 2019. 
Among her other attributes, Mr. Hutchings has appointed her to this position based on her experience, legal acumen, and community involvement. I'm not really sure it's listed in her job description, but personally, I think one of her most outstanding attributes is her smile. <laughs> and there it is. Since my time on council, I can attest that our city attorney's office has always provided exceptional, unparalleled legal advice and attended to the legal matters of our city in an exemplary manner. On behalf of city council, I welcome Stephanie into her new position as deputy city attorney. I am confident that her leadership, vision, and dedication will play an integral role in continuing the outstanding services provided by the city attorney's office. It is only fitting that the Honorable Helvi Holland, judge of the Fifth Judicial District Court and predecessor to Mr. Hutchings, is present today and will perform the oath of office. Ms. Holland, will you please come to the podium? Good afternoon. The mayor has already said what I was going to say, that it is truly an honor to be here to see the torch pass one more time. I do have the distinct privilege to say that I was the one who hired Stephanie Pugh. <laughs> and I knew then that she was going to be an excellent attorney, and she's followed in my footsteps as it relates to starting off as an assistant, going to deputy, and then one day when William is just tired of all of the gentlemen to my right, um, <laughs> She'll have an opportunity to work with them and be as happy as I was doing that. Stephanie, would you join me, please? We have her family. Raise your right hand. State, I, Stephanie J. Pugh. I, Stephanie J. Q. You solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia, and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia, and that I will faithfully and impartially, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge all of my duties become upon me. All of my duties encumbered upon me as the deputy city attorney for the city of Suffolk. As the deputy city attorney for the city of Suffolk. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. I'd like to ask Mr. William Hutchings to the podium to kick off our remarks. And uh, after Mr. Hutchings, we'll have the LNO ladies, Alonzo Smith, and of course, Ms. Stephanie Pugh. Good afternoon. So, as you noticed, um, Stephanie was sworn in, and that is because she is the deputy city attorney, which her role may um, require her to step in the shoes of the city attorney. And so I thought it was fitting to sort of explain what I see as the characteristics of a city attorney. First, um, the city attorney needs to be professional and have high ethical standards. Be fair to all, to everyone, to the extent that's allowed by law. To build trust with those that he or she works with and to respect others. And I will say from the time that I've worked with Stephanie, uh, since she started here in 2019. She has exhibited all of those things. But that's not, not the only t thing time that I've heard that. I hear it from the departments that she represents. I frequently get compliments from the various departments that she's represented over her time here at the city. And each one of these attributes show up in those recommendations. And what I find to be most reassuring that um, Stephanie is a good fit to be deputy city attorney is the enthusiasm and diligence that she has engaged in this 
in her duties since she has been appointed as deputy city attorney. So I am not hesitant at all in saying that I believe that she will do well in this role. I thank her for accepting the role and congratulate Stephanie. Thank you. My name is Erica Massey, and the three of us are going to speak together. Go ahead. Uh, I'm LaVonda Graham-Williams, City Attorney for Portsmouth. Tamale Van Hobson, Deputy City Attorney in Norfolk. All right. So we just want to say a few words about Stephanie. I would like to start off by saying that, let's see, I've known Stephanie for about 10 years now. I think a little over 10 years. And one of the things that I've always admired about Stephanie is her ability to take the time to actually really get to know who you are as a person. Um, she definitely puts time into the relationships that she builds with her friends and with work colleagues. Um, and I know that because we started out as work colleagues. That's how we met. I was a city attorney in Norfolk, and she was on the court-appointed list um, in juvenile court. So we ended up on working on cases together, and that work relationship blossomed into a friendship um, that we've had. And the thing that I know is going to carry her far through in this position that she's in now is the fact that she does take the time to get to know people, work-wise and friendship-wise. And I think that that's a great attribute for her to have when you have to work with various personalities throughout the city, because I certainly know that it's a difficult task managing all of the personalities that you encounter throughout the city, and I think she's gonna do a wonderful job. And I'm looking forward to everything that's in her future. Stephanie and I first met, I believe, in, it wasn't the early aughts, so maybe 2008. We met as colleagues, both have a passion for the law. From there, we learned that we have another passion and that we are both members, proud members, of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> what Stephanie brings to the table is what all of you recognize. In this group, we came together because Stephanie is an organizer. She brings people together. And together, LNO, Law and Order group, we break bread because Stephanie is a bit of a foodie. And what better place to bring your ideas and your passions than over a meal? As Erica said, and I'd like to second, Stephanie is about building relationships. What she recognizes is that it's not about just about interpretation of the law. It's about being able to pick up the phone and communicate with that person, listen to them, and bring them where they need to be because she's taken the time to build that relationship. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I was trying to figure out when I met Stephanie, and she's one of these personalities that you feel like you've known her forever the moment you meet her. Um, I still can't place it, but I know I wasn't here, even, even though I'm from here. Um, I'm originally from Portsmouth, but I started my career in Northern Virginia, and I was there for many years, and I ran into Stephanie at a conference. And I was latched on to her from that point on. We, she was the one who always made sure we stayed in contact. And when I returned to my roots here in the city, she made sure I connected with these ladies and many of you in this audience. Um, she's a connector, a bridge maker. She's also a powerhouse of opinion, okay, and not afraid to share it. Um, she's a natural born leader, and her signature smile and infectious laugh will make any bad news she has to give you that much sweeter. <laughs> so um, she's ever loyal and a fantastic storyteller. Suffolk, you are lucky because I have tried to steal her every <laughs> moment I could from my own office. But I am so proud, so very proud. We are all proud, the, the law and order ladies, and many of you in the audience, to be able to stand here and introduce her as your deputy city attorney. Congratulations. How y'all doing? My name is Alonzo Smith. I'm the deputy city attorney's husband. 
I'm okay with that title for the rest of the day. <laughs> Good afternoon, family, friends, esteemed guests, and members of the Suffolk community, and the remaining awesome people in the room. Today, I stand before you as the proud husband and friend of the deputy city attorney. I will start by saying thank you to all the people present virtually, physically, and in spirit who have shaped Stephanie's personal and professional life that led us all to celebrate this milestone in her career. Too many to list, but special recognition for her parents, Ms. Cheryl Pugh, Pugh and Mr. Larry Pugh, because it all started with you too. When I re-met Stephanie some six years ago, I'll let that story reside with her, I asked her what she did professionally. She stated she liked helping people. What you may not know about Stephanie is she likes surprises and especially loves giving them. What she didn't know about me is I hate guessing. I'm okay with being wrong if a better answer can emerge in the next seven seconds and it doesn't have to come from me. My response, helping people, helping people do what? Seven seconds gave me way too much time to come up with crazy answers and I began to consume my mental capacity with the fear of demonstrating my lack of skill in the disrespectful route of obtaining knowledge through guessing. She saw the confusion, pain, and anxiety in my face and realized she was asking way too much of me. <laughs> Five seconds passed. She blessed me with an answer. She told me she was an attorney. Whew. Now I can spend my days learning how attorneys help people because all those episodes from watching Night Court with my sister did not set a good example of what right looked like. <clears throat> True story. In June of 2019, a position opened <clears throat> in the city of Suffolk uh, attorney's office. Stephanie and I were going to dinner, and it was customary that after being stuck in traffic prior to the HRBT tunnel, my house was the rest stop. We will save the deeply embedded oxymoron as to why a tunnel built to expedite the flow of traffic will stop the flow of traffic for miles only to come out of the tunnel with no more traffic. For later, tunnels must be magical sometimes, but not in a good way. This particular day, there was something extra about her look. She beamed with such energy and enthusiasm and proceeded to tell me about the position at the Suffolk City, City Attorney's Office, and that was her dream job. Only a dream opportunity could come between a person and a bathroom break. I immediately recognized that this position would give Stephanie the opportunity to demonstrate her passion for helping people. Stephanie started for working for the City Attorney's Office in July of 2019. We are at our best when we use our skills in a challenging way to achieve a positive outcome. The most beneficial activities for us are those that are also beneficial for others. And this is called meaningful work. Congratulations, Stephanie. Your journey has prepared you to demonstrate your strengths <clears throat> while practicing your passion of helping people. One of your many superpowers. You have a natural capacity to consider issues from multiple perspectives. You are considerate, caring, accepting, confident, and the power of people working together. You are inquisitive and always want to know more, not just to know, but to build bridges to others. All the qualities are what makes a leader great. <clears throat> Today, Stephanie, I have another dream for you. I dream that you may enjoy the rare privilege of spending your days in meaningful work that you serve your neighbor, your family, and your community in this occupation, and that by it, you are able to provide for all your temporal needs. Continue creating your story. Continue to inspire others on their path to meaningful work. May your tenure be filled with triumphs and accomplishments, leading to a brighter future for the city of Suffolk and to all that experience its mission, vision, and hometown charm. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, members of city council, family, friends, colleagues, and my fellow coworkers of the beautiful city of Suffolk, good afternoon. I stand before you today in complete awe of this moment. I'm truly grateful to my boss, city attorney William E. Hutchings Jr. for selecting me 
to serve with him as the deputy city attorney for the city of Suffolk. Thank you to the members of city council for ratifying my appointment. And thank you to former deputy city attorney Mueller for retiring. <laughs> Some of you may know this. Um, I've wanted to work for a city attorney's office for a number of years before coming here. I have some friends, you've already heard from them, uh, who worked in local government. And I remember thinking local government was such a noble path, one that would build upon the skills I had acquired working for legal aid, the public defender's office, and even in private practice. And if I'm being candid, it was also a path that could lead to retirement. Most attorneys don't think about retirement until later in their careers, but while the practice of law was my second career, I was trying to figure out where I fit, where I could thrive and be successful as an attorney. In 2019, I found my perfect fit, thanks to then city attorney, Hella Vahala. Since coming to work for the city, I've learned so much and grown under some amazing, like absolutely amazing leadership. I'd like to thank Judge Holland, former Deputy City Attorneys Carla Carter and her absence and Tom Mueller, as well as City Attorney William Hutchins for your leadership and guidance. Each of you in your own way encouraged me to step outside of my comfort zone and ultimately apply for this position. William, thank you. Thank you for believing in my ability to serve in this capacity and selecting me for this appointment. Thank you to my coworkers in the CTA office, or that's what you all call us when you send us requests, <laughs> who've been nothing short of wonderful to work alongside. You make it very easy to come to work, and you're part of the reason that I love my job. So my LNO ladies, thank you for being strong, professional, like-minded women who provide a sounding board, laughter, and good times whenever we're together. And on that note, we're overdue. We need to schedule something. Each of you possess such strength and grace, and I'm glad to call you not just my colleague, but my friends. Thank you to my family, those who are here in person, those who are watching virtually, and my friends and mentors for all of your prayers, warm wishes, congratulations, you all continue to encourage me, and I appreciate each of you. To my parents, thank you for giving me the proper foundation. Both of you continue to show me the importance of integrity, a solid work ethic, and faith in God. My father, he's always had a listening ear, shown me love like no other, and he makes me laugh when life really tries to beat me down. To my mom, she probably doesn't know this, but she's been my role model since birth. We don't always have the same perspective on things, and I'm sure she knows that. She'll say, I know, I know, you don't have to listen to me. But she's always supported my dreams, whether it was to be an engineer or an attorney. She epitomizes Proverbs 31 and displays a strength I can only strive to attain. Both you, mom and dad, have molded me into the woman I am today. Thank you. Alonzo. <laughs> you are an extraordinary man, and I am extremely grateful to be your wife. You've exposed me to new experiences, and I love absolutely love the Smith Credible Adventure that is our life. You've been so encouraging from when I applied to come work for the city to even cheer me on to apply to be the DCA, as you like to call it, from reviewing my cover letter, giving me honest, sometimes extremely direct feedback, <laughs> and then smiling and saying, what? That's what you asked me. You want me to be honest, don't you? That's what makes a marriage work, is honesty. <laughs> Thank you for being a voice of reason when I'm unsure of myself or my next steps. Your constant love, support, and genuine desire for me to achieve my dreams is why I stand here today. 
In closing, I'm truly blessed to stand here as the deputy city attorney. I'm humbled to be the third black female deputy city attorney in the city of Suffolk's 50 years of existence. I cannot express enough my gratitude that God saw fit for me to be in this position, and I'm reminded of Esther 414, because God has definitely appointed me for such a time as this. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, and congratulations again. I'd like to ask Mr. Moody back to the podium to provide the benediction. Good afternoon again. <clears throat> um, I'm going to steal 30 seconds, if that's all right. Um, I know I'm not on the schedule for remarks, but <clears throat> I am on the schedule for a benediction, and I'm going to tie it into the benediction, but I would just like to say that um, Stephanie has, I call it, in my mind, I refer to her as my sister-in-law, um, and that is in the legal field. Um, we started in the, or I started in the Portion Commonwealth Attorney's Office. She was there. She was an, a little more experienced attorney than I was, and she really took me under her wing and um, has really kind of guided me and helped me to become the lawyer that I am today. Um, I made some mistakes. Um, she's quick to correct me if I am wrong, uh, which I appreciate. Um, I eventually went on to become a minister, but before I became a minister, she is the one who friended me on the Bible app, and she would constantly, I could see her activity. She would constantly be reading scriptures and going through different Bible plans, and that really encouraged my walk and helped me in being more um, disciplined in getting into the Word of God. So with that in mind, even though I am getting, given the benediction today, I'm going to ask that you all join me in praying for Stephanie, but don't let this be the last time that you pray for her, right? These city officials, they are very... Um, involved. There's a lot going on, so keep them lifted up. Um, not just Stephanie, we're going to pray for her in just a minute, but I appreciate all the dignitaries who are here. Keep everyone lifted up. As you all know, these are some tumultuous times, right? So I encourage you as we pray today, don't let this be your last prayer. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for this day. We thank you for Stephanie, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in her life. We ask that you would bless her now, Lord, like only you can. Touch her, Lord. Touch her mind, her body, her soul. Lord, we ask that you would touch her mind and that she would make wise decisions, Lord, that she would be confident in the decisions that she makes, that she would give wise counsel to those who she will be advising. Lord, we ask that you would touch her body now, Father, so that she might work optimally for the city of Suffolk and work optimally, ultimately, for you, Lord. Now we ask that you would touch her spirit, Lord. We bless her and her spirit right now, Lord, as we know that we are battling spiritual warfare, Lord. We ask that you would put your hedge of protection around her as she walks in this role. Guide each and every footstep that she takes, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would be with her on the way to work, at lunch, in her office, in court, while she's dealing with clients, each and every step of the way, Lord. We ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to dwell with her so that she might carry out your will from this day forward. Lord, now we ask that you would just allow a special blessing on each and every person here, Lord, this community that is surrounding Stephanie, Lord. Touch each and every one of them like only you know how. Her family, her friends, Brother Alonzo, Lord, we lift him up. We ask that you would continue to bless him so that he might be a continuous and steadfast and steady support for Stephanie. Lord, we give your name all the glory, the honor, the praise. We're asking that you would just continue again. Be with her, Lord. Guide her ways, continue to be a light into her path, and we will be careful to be careful to give your name all the glory, the honor, and praise. Lord, again, right now, I encourage, I invoke each and every one of us to remember to pray for Stephanie and our governing officials. Lord, put it in our heart, put that little reminder, that little spark in our mind that when we think of these people, that we might say just a quick prayer for them so that they might continue to do ultimately your work. Lord, we bless Stephanie. We bless this city. Again, we bless each and every person here. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Thank you, Mr. Moody, and thank you all for joining us today. Stephanie invites each of you to join us next door for a dessert bar, and it's in the conference room right out of this hall to the right. Uh, and I'd like to ask a few special friends and guests of Stephanie to stay back for uh, photos. Um, but other than that, thank you for coming and have a wonderful afternoon. Yeah.